Last week I posted online, M. Night Shyamalan is the greatest director of all time, change my mind. Now I expected that my statement would be given a Nobel Peace Prize, and yet... Spirit of Chaos says Avatar The Last Airbender Movie, enough said. Interesting. Spirit of Chaos was actually the only comment to mention M. Night Shyamalan's remake of the beloved animated series Avatar The Last Airbender. We'll get into The Last Airbender, but before we do, let's talk of three words. The. Last. Airbender. Okay, well, I guess Spirit of Chaos wasn't the only one to mention The Last Airbender. Andrew also had something to say about it as well, but, you know, hold your horses. We'll get to that in a screen rant. M. Night Shyamalan is the best director of all time. Me. Laughs. In Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, we're all laughing together, haha. <laughs> but before we talk about the, the last airbender, five <laughs> person, right, to me. Listen, we'll discuss the last airbender in The Last Airbender is a serious stain on his career the same way some people will never consider LeBron the GOAT because of his stains. Okay, okay. Okay, you want to talk about The Last Airbender? Then let's just talk about it. The original series is maybe the greatest TV show ever. And while some may say that Shyamalan's remake is bad, I say it's... <sighs> okay, yeah. It, uh, it's bad, okay? It's really bad. I admit it. But just like LeBron, M. Night's legacy is not a story of constant success. It is a tale of ups and downs. Shyamalan is not the Michael Jordan of filmmaking, as much as he loved the wizard's legend. Shyamalan has failed multiple times in the face of great expectations. And that's what makes him the greatest director of all time. Because his career reminds us, it's okay to fail. It's okay to go four to six in the NBA finals. As long as we're trying our best. And besides, almost every film he's ever made has been a flop. He only has like five successful movies. I think this comment is supposed to be disagreeing with me, but five successful movies? That's pretty good. To talk about Shyamalan, I've broken his film career into four acts. Act one, the next Spielberg. After a few mostly unnotable first films, Praying with Anger and Wide Awake, Shyamalan struck gold with both The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable, two films loved by the weeb god himself. Everyone's saying The Last Airbender, but he did make some good movies, like The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable. The Sixth... The Sixth... The Sixth Sense was both critically and commercially adored. It became one of the 10 highest grossing movies of all time upon its release, and garnered Shyamalan an Oscar nomination for Best Director. The Oscar goes to... Sam Mendes for American Beauty. Something I myself was expecting to get when I posted my comment online, but at least you're starting to agree with me, right? Um, no offense, but have you watched his version of The Last Airbender? Yes, I, I, I... I have watched The Last Airbender, I have. It's not a happy moment. <clears throat> anyway, these two films are widely considered as classics. They're endlessly interpretable, but for the purpose of this video, I want to highlight some key themes in both films. The Sixth Sense explores the difficulty in trying to reach out to people who are in need of support. The kid sees dead people. I see dead people. And Bruce Willis is a psychiatrist who's trying to help him. But he's got issues of his own. He's absent in a relationship and sort of just floating through life. That's because he's been dead for the whole time. A twist that only aids the theme of the movie. How could Willis's character help others when he feels the worst pain of all? Death. Unbreakable presents another Bruce Willis character who's also floating through life after two traumatic vehicle accidents. Over the course of the film, the character learns to fight past his fear, trauma, and insecurity in order to find the self-confidence needed to help others. It's the same struggle as The Sixth Sense. B. Willie wants to support people, but he needs to find his self-confidence first. So, Shyamalan's undoubtedly the greatest. Right? Well, Nathan says, M. Night Shyamalan, Avatar The Last Airbender Movie, Steven Spielberg, <laughs> Indiana Jones, Jaws, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, really? Schindler's List, E.T., The Adventures of Tintin, Raiders of the Lost Ark, etc. Do I need to type any further? No, you can, uh, you can actually stop typing. You know what? I'm actually glad that you brought up Stevie Spees, because it was around this time that M. Night Shyamalan was famously described by Newsweek magazine as the next Spielberg. Then he came out with signs, and then he came out with Exhibit B, The Village. And as for Exhibit C, seriously, we saw it, and 
I think it rules. Both Signs and The Village are films about questioning our beliefs in a time of great crisis. But Act 1 was not a time of crisis for Shyamalan, at least not publicly. It was a time in which Knight was called the next Steven Spielberg. He was seen as a filmmaker that could accomplish what the characters of the first two of his movies were struggling with. Shyamalan's films reached out to people. They connected with the audience. But as Shyamalan's career took a nosedive in the public eye, he too would fall into a crisis of faith. He began to question his own beliefs and instincts, just like Signs and The Village had predicted. This brings us to Act 2. I don't know what's going on with me and the critics in the United States. I gotta tell you, um, something's going on. The Turning Point. Shyamalan followed up the village with his widely hated film, Lady in the Water. To appreciate the movie, you have to read Michael Bamberg's brilliant book, The Man Who Heard Voices. It explores Knight's intense self-doubt during the making of the film, and in reading the book, it becomes very clear what Shyamalan was trying to do with Lady in the Water. It is a movie about a group of neighbors coming together to help a narf named Story find her way back home. The film is a fantasy, actually, it's M. Night Shyamalan's fantasy. As electroshock therapy for the soul said, no man, he's the best writer. Lady in the Water already told us this. Call it self-indulgent, but in the film, Shyamalan plays a writer whose brilliant words will go on to unite the world and save the universe. It's a very positive, uncynical film, aside from one moment in which a snobby film critic is brutally murdered. Wonder who he's responding to. <clears throat> My favorite line in the movie is when Knight's character describes the book he's writing. It's actually you know, just my thoughts on all the cultural problems and thoughts on leaders and stuff. He says it with all the pain of trying to create and describe Lady in the Water itself, and the struggle to understand what the hell it's even about. But here's the thing. Lady in the Water is about trying to believe in the childlike joy of storytelling, and of the possibility for a crew of people to come together to achieve a common goal. The neighbors in this movie are like a film crew, and in making Lady in the Water, Knight is portraying his own real-life fantasy, a fantasy that he can motivate a team of people to silence the mean critics in his life, as well as his own voices of self-doubt. Shyamalan wants his films to help people. He wants his brilliant writing to unite the world and save the universe. In act one of his career, Shyamalan sort of did that, but unfortunately his Lady in the Water fantasy did not come true. Mean critics did tear the film apart, his film did not connect with people, and then everyone's all the last airbender and I'm over here, um, the happening? <sighs> Which sadly brings us to act three, The Descent. Oh no. What oh no. And honestly, um, The Happening is right. That film stinks. Talking to And so did his next two flicks, The Last Airbender, which for some reason no one has mentioned yet, and After Earth, which nobody should ever mention, ever. Yeah, um, so let's just move along. At this point, Shyamalan had lost his ability to reach people. His self-confidence seemed shattered. It's not my fight to fight. I'm, I'm defenseless, it's the audience, if they choose to fight for me, they fight for me. And... He'd lost his filmmaking instincts, he was no longer the next Spielberg. Bro, everybody knows that Steven Spielberg and Adam Sandler are the best directors of all time. Shyamalan wasn't even the Shakespeare of his generation, because that title goes to Adam Sandler. But as Margaret puts it, I enjoy all his movies and find them rewatchable. I think one reason is that his movies don't feel dated to me. Perhaps because they have a slightly off atmosphere to begin with. Every great director has duds under their belt, even someone like Scorsese. And I completely agree. And Shyamalan didn't allow his duds to define him. After Act 3, Shyamalan did something remarkable. Act 4. The comeback. M. Night wanted to feel scared again. He wanted to feel that if things went wrong and his next film was a flop, that there was something to lose. So he decided to self-fund his next movie. And you know what? The film was a massive success. So he did it again. And, uh, and then he did it again. <laughs> the Visit, Split, and Glass were each huge financial hits. And aside from Glass, which I personally think is a masterpiece, they each had a positive reception. And Glass isn't just a masterpiece. 
It's also an important evolution in the story of Shyamalan's career. It is a film about the transformative power of storytelling. Glass argues that we can all find inspiration from heroes on screen in order to find the inner strength slash the inner superhero in each of us. It's a film about finding self-confidence, about regaining our beliefs in a time of great crisis. And it's about how stories can help us do that. Glass is the culmination of everything that Shyamalan's career had been working towards. Shyamalan made a movie that reminds us everyone is a hero no matter what the critics or our voices of self-doubt tell us. Forgotten Little Lost One sums it up well when they just say, M. Night Shyamalan is doing his best. Lol. He has hits and misses. Just saying. Shyamalan doesn't have a flawless track record. But his failures don't stop him from trying. That's why M. Night Shyamalan is the greatest director of all time. And I'm glad that we all agree. Avatar, The Last Airbender, Die, you need more reasons. No! So, what do you think? Are you convinced that M. Night Shyamalan is the LeBron James of film directors? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to try to change my mind or just join in the conversation, check out the community tab on the Screen Rant channel page where you can ask the question, what in the world is wrong with you?